du 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 Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, 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 Hare Hare, Hare movement. Jai. Where they Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare movement. So if you want to be part of the Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare movement, then you better chant this Maha Mantra, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama, Rama Hare Hare. Wait, what do we actually do in this movement? This movement is uh, about chanting the Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare mantra. <laughs> That's the Maha Mantra. Yeah. That's the one that goes Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare uh, Hare. I almost uh, <laughs> thought that you lost it there. <laughs> You forgot the, the 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 famous Maha Mantra, which goes like this: Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari 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 Rama, Hari Rama Rama Rama, Hari Hari. I saw the Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari 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 Rama, Hari Rama Rama Rama, Hari Haris on the street chanting. Oh, they were chanting that the the Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari 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 Ram, Hari Rama Rama Rama, Hari Hari Mantra on the street. I saw them also. They were very. I was very uh, ecstatic. Yeah. So that's who we are. <clears throat> okay, that was the introduction. <laughs> Welcome to the Bliss Podcast. Hare Krishna. And uh, nowadays, I mean, now we're going to discuss the hot topic for everyone, and that is the new lockdowns. Boo. <clears throat> Jai. <laughs> <laughs> some, some schizophrenia in bliss. <laughs> Jai and boo at the same time. Achinta beda beda tatva. Yeah, I wanted to. I wanted to expound on the philosophy of simultaneously one and different at the same time. My tri- yeah. Switch up the cards a little bit. My Prabhu went to the streets today. I had to take rest. I was so smashed to pieces. I slept the whole day. I did nothing. I was just sleeping, and uh, doing nothing. My Maitreya went and he was distributing books the whole day. When Purja Prabhu is sleeping, it's actually so called sleeping. He's actually not sleeping. That's just the Leela. He's actually in Samadhi serving Krishna in the spiritual world. That's simply for my... So I don't become bewildered. So please don't get misled. Not exactly in the spiritual world. I, When I sleep, I dream of devotional service of eating prasadam. <laughs> I'm dreaming and living this devotional service all day and all the time. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> just to introduce to the people who are listening to this podcast in the year 4000 um, recently there's been the um, big pandemic this is the greatest uh, crisis in the world's history that we know of course you know there were many more crises people don't understand the Vedic history (coughs) Hirana Kashipu was also covering the sun and stuff like that so it's not new, not new history, but um, in recent history, it's quite a huge thing. You know, the whole world is affected by this pandemic. Pandemic. So um, <clears throat> there was already one lockdown last, no, it was this year actually, in March. And um, people were locked for months. They couldn't go out. Um and the whole idea is that if they don't go out, then the virus, the dangerous virus, will not spread and will not kill people. So um, after this lock, the first lockdown, people were released, released from the cages, and uh, the virus increased again now. And this was already predicted. I was watching an interview with Bill Gates. He said that this is what's going to happen. And in winter time, the virus is going to go up, and there's going to be a, a need of another lockdown. So now the lockdown is here. Yuppie! Bill it's Gates, very intelligent man. Just see how, just see how precise, how pinpoint his his prediction was. We actually also were thinking as soon as they released the lockdown um, that it was going to spread because it wasn't fully cleared up. So this was very poor planning. 
to say. When they released the people, we immediately, Maitreya booked his ticket to UK and we moved here. Woo, flew the plane. We had to escape immediately, La Lina, before we were locked down and stuck in Spain for another term. Yeah, Spain, without knowing the language and... <laughs> So, uh, now, recently, two days ago, the Prime Minister said that um, um, it's going to be a new lockdown. He was holding his grounds for some time. He didn't want to lock people up. That's some human consideration, I think. I am not sure. <laughs> and uh, now the lockdown is here. So, from Thursday, in three days, everything is locked, locked up. Everyone is going to be locked up, and whoever comes out will get a big fine. It's not exactly like that. You can go out if you work. Very nice. <laughs> if you work like a slave, then you're free. Then that is the real. That's that is their idea of freedom. Slavery is free, you know. So you have freedom. You can enjoy slavery. So, <clears throat> of course, there are various ideas people are protesting in the streets it's the lockdown is in germany france also um uh poland i think czech republic Prague. well that's in czech republic yeah yeah uh -huh. um and i apparently the u.s is also going to do a lockdown i think well trump said now there's election also somewhat everything at once all all the major events this is kind of a uh, tense election. Trump is very, you know, mixing the cards. He's like the most controversial president in the history of USA, right? Yeah, every election, or well, the first election when he was first running also was like complete uh, chaos, controversy. Yeah, so he said that there's not going to be a lockdown if people elect him. If people elect him, yeah. Yeah, so um, um, what it means to us <coughs> bliss devotees is that we won't be able to do book distribution which is the 90% of our income that's how we survive and uh, as it was in, with the first lockdown we assume that this is not going to because they said it's going to be for one month they, they're they just going to lock everything for one month and then back again you know so don't be afraid don't panic it's just one month that's okay but we don't believe that you believe that no namely because they said exactly the same thing the first lockdown exactly the same all liars and cheaters see so um how does it relate to krishna consciousness well okay just just one um request um since we don't have any income and we have to pay um the rent here on our place in london we must go now. I must go. So, I have to go now to the Iceland local Iceland, so I can purchase water, so we don't die of thirst. Also, while li being locked down and with no pay. Yeah. Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you for saving our lives. Uh, so, um, we would humbly um, ask uh, all our friends if you have benefited from listening to our podcasts in the few in in the past and in the present. If you are um, checking our activities here, we're trying to spread Krishna consciousness through the means of distribution of Srila Prabhupada's holy books and by chanting in the streets. This is a very simple process Srila Prabhupada gave us of how to propagate Krishna consciousness. Please um, send a donation of your choice. Anything helps. We don't know what's going to happen as usual. Uh, we have no other source of income except your kind donations. Um, uh, and we don't know what's going to happen. So we're in a little anxiety. Um, and especially if the lockdown goes on and on and on. We don't know how we're going to pay the rent here. And um, uh, it's quite possible that... Um, everything fails and we will have to shut down our preaching at a certain point in the format that we do now so uh, anyway oh, any donation 
be it small or big is appreciated uh, by all you kind friends I mean in the uh, last year or so we have gained so many nice supporters so many good friends who are willing to support quite substantial amounts to keep us going we very much appreciate this and uh, we give um, free ebooks to the uh, patreon members and also to some of our good friends this is how we can um, reciprocate the kind gesture and uh, so anyway um, uh, the uh, the lockdown how it relates to Krishna consciousness <coughs> um, we are uh, not sentimental so-called religionists devotees are not sentimental so-called religionists who are using their spiritual practice as some kind of escape from reality now in the Bhagavad Gita Krishna tells Arjuna to fight Arjuna is the greatest example of um, Vaishnavism or a devotee of Krishna is exemplify the qualities of a devotee and especially of surrender to to God and um, the whole Bhagavad Gita this is our main scripture um, is about taking active part in the world's affairs. Mm. Krishna is very much concerned for the well-being of his parts and parcels. And similarly, devotees of Krishna should be uh, very considerate um, and understand the... Um, the consequences of neglecting the general mass of people this is not the nature of Srila Prabhupada only but all great saints and acharyas in the past um, have been preaching to the masses and trying to elevate them to God consciousness so um, although this is a, a political topic and relates to the mundane world we don't want to stay aloof because we're we are concerned for the well-being of the whole world and people uh, in the world so um, I've been researching this uh, subject of uh, the pandemic a little bit and I must say that um, I'm still very ignorant about what is actually going on. It's very difficult to understand. And, uh, all right, Krishna. And, um, the reason for this is that, as Srila Prabhupada told us many times, the ascending process of acquiring knowledge is always imperfect the two types of methods of how to get knowledge one of them is descending process just like we are taking the information from our disciplic line our disciplic succession and the uh, origin of that succession is God himself Krishna Krishna has perfect understanding of this world since he created it. And so he uh, explains the science of God consciousness and it is passed down through disciplic succession unchanged through self-realized souls who are pure, who do not have any agenda. Um, so in this way if we receive the knowledge we have perfect knowledge and then there's another process called ascending process and that is that through our limited senses and mind we try to ascertain the situation by research so there's plenty of information on the internet for example 
but um, it's very difficult to navigate who to believe. You have so many different viewpoints and they are contradictory and sometimes they're false. Sometimes people, they make up things just to get more hits on the internet. Bombastic news are attractive. Something shocking, you know, is very always attractive. And if you have lots of research, boring research, people are not so much attracted to study deeply. Just like Srila Prabhupada's books, this is a very substantial knowledge. But because it's so tedious to study these books, people are not interested. They want quick answers, quick solution, attractive, um, flowery words. Uh, so it's not so uh, easy to read Prabhupada's books and people, they are cheated in this way because they're not serious. So anyway, th there are so many different theories about this pandemic and the lockdowns and it's very difficult to navigate. But um, I would humbly uh, suggest that we stick with Srila Prabhupada because we know that Srila Prabhupada is perfect Whatever he says is channeled from Krishna. So we can't go wrong if we stick with Srila Prabhupada. And Srila Prabhupada would condemn the scientists. Even now you can see all these governments, why they're doing these shutdowns, this, these lockdowns in the country. Because the scientists, they're showing the different numbers rising of the victims of the coronavirus. And they have their scientific theories of how the virus is spreading and so on and so on. So the government actually is simply the executive power of the scientists who give, who give the knowledge of um, what to do and what is going on. Yes. So, um, Srila Prabhupada is the first in the history who challenged the scientists back in the 70s and 60s. And in his books, Srila Prabhupada is challenging the scientists. And he, he says this very same thing. He says, well, because they're imperfect and they're researching things with their imperfect senses, their conclusions are also imperfect. And then we can see, um, as opposed to the disciplic succession and the Bhagavad Gita, the conclusions of the scientists, they change all the time. And they're even proud of it. They say that the science is not, uh, doesn't give the truth. Thank you, Prabhu. Um, the science, they define science as uh, continuous research. And actually, if you have some conclusive knowledge, then you become immediately suspect in the scientific community. If you're not changing your <laughs> conclusions, you immediately are suspect. Yes, Prabhu. Too good to be true for the scientists. <clears throat> I just also have a comment in this connection that uh, I was talking to a guy on book distribution today, and he was talking to me about the scientists, basically, and that we've got to get off the planet because the scientists say that the world is going to end the sun is going to blow up in so many years and um, <coughs> because it's, it's uh, my point is that it's ridiculous that people trust these scientific conclusions the scientists have absolutely no me he was describing to me um, that I said well how do you know the sun's going to blow up and he said, well, supernovas, these suns blowing up, are happening all over the universe. So, leaving aside the Vedic um, version that there is only one sun for the whole universe, so we know that this is not true, yeah. even if we just theoretically accept that there may be suns, from one point of view, the scientific incorrect point of view, how could they possibly ascertain with their puny eyes that supernovas are happening all over the universe. They have n the, this guy. First of all, the scientists have no way of understanding if that's happening. They have such imperfect methods, no instruments even that could conceive of this. There's no evidence, no pictures, no nothing. Totally just speculation and faith. 
And then still more foolish are people that accept these scientists as an authority. So uh, anyway, that was just one thing I wanted to add because I was numbering in this connection. There is always some axiomatic truth. Whatever knowledge you take, whatever tradition, whatever system, you must base it on some premise, some basic premise. That's called axiomatic truth. So these scientists, they're posing as very, uh, how would I say, uncommitted to anything. Right? Just research. We don't believe in anything. It must be proven and we don't make any assumptions. They call this God consciousness an assumption. It's an assumption. It's a guesswork. Nothing is certain. But they also, they have some axiomatic truth. For example, their method of researching is an axiomatic truth. Unless it is proven to the senses, this is not science. This is an axiomatic truth. Why are they using this truth? Why, why are they using this system in the first place? Why, why we cannot challenge that system? Sri Prabhupada is challenging the very system. He's not dealing with tiny, puny little details. It's true, scientists, they have discovered many things, and, I mean, we can't deny there's a benefit in it, but the system they use is imperfect. It's not real knowledge. And, you know, I recently I published a, a, a meme on Facebook. I don't know if you saw it. Um, the scientists, they said that it was a meme made of different posters, ads in a newspaper, from like a hundred years ago or eighty years ago, and they were saying sick. There was a picture of a pregnant woman, and yeah. and it was an ad advertisement for cigarettes. Yeah. If you, if a pregnant woman smokes cigarettes, it will help her lungs. The, the, they were advertising this wow. in a newspaper. So now we know. Now there's a complete opposite. You on a cigarette package, you see how the embryo is damaged by the smoke. And they said, Pregn you can't smoke while you're pregnant. <clears throat> this is the greatest harm for the child. So these are the same scientists. One time they say smoke is good. Another time they say no, it's not good. So this is madness. Why should we listen to these mad people? This is the first point. We don't have to go to the details, whether the pandemic is a conspiracy or this and that. But just by reading Srila Prabhupada's books, we should challenge this whole faith, absolute faith that we put in the scientists telling us what to do. Because the scientists are, are a bunch of idiots. They don't know what is going on. They're just speculating. And based on their speculations, now the world is following. Another point is that the scientists are paid off. They take salaries and this makes them vulnerable to uh, bribery. In a Vedic society, the scientists are called Brahmanas. They're vo always voluntarily in poverty. In other words, if a Brahmana gets a donation, he immediately spends for Krishna, for worship of Krishna, and in the evening he has nothing. This is a perfect Brahmana. He accepts donations, and he spends, I mean, he doesn't keep anything for himself, just so he protects himself from corruption. If a brahmana becomes attached to money, he becomes vulnerable and he becomes manipulated. He becomes subject to manipulation to those who pay. This is a, a great danger for all the devotees, all spiritualists. If they get donations, if they don't use it for preaching work, and if they collect unnecessarily to build big temples and you know make big projects, they might become attached and then they might change the philosophy. You know, this this knowledge, this Vedic philosophy is so important because it gives you know direction to the whole society. So if the Brahmanas are corrupted, they will uh, temper with the knowledge, for the sake of misguiding, for the sake of interest of those who are, who are uh, controlling them. 
You see, that's why I said in the beginning that disciplic succession consists of self-realized souls who are through, through whom the message is passing as though a light was passing through a series of transparent glasses without any tinge, without any interruption. This is very important. That's why we're so much fond of Srila Prabhupada because he's a pure soul. Of course, there might be many other spiritual masters Nowadays, we don't say that they're not good, that's okay, you can be a spiritual master. But a pure soul, a pure devotee, there's a difference. See, if someone is not pure, he might make a mistake. And if we accept such a spiritual master on the absolute platform, absolute surrender, then it's an absolute failure. See, we should not accept a, a person who is on the material platform with absolute faith. but So that is going on in, right now. We're accepting the scientists as absolute authorities. And these scientists are not real scientists. From the Vedic point of view, they're not Brahmanas. They're corrupted because they depend on salaries. They're getting their salaries. A Brahmana doesn't accept salaries. Sometimes people suggest, foolish people, they suggest, well, why don't you go and get a job? This is not how the Brahmanas should preach. You know, we can't get a job because then we, we become subjected to to money and so on and so on. So the Brahmanas should always remain independent, not, not even have a salary. Even the salary makes you dependent. The Brahmana is simply teaching Vedic knowledge and he depends on Krishna. Krishna dictates to people from within their hearts to support the brahmanas. That's how we've been living here uh, with Maitreya Prabhu. And this is how it works. Srila Prabhupada's method works. This is how Srila Prabhupada instructed his devotees. Don't get jobs. You preach Krishna consciousness. Save your time. This is required. The people need a class of men who are free from corruption and who can preach the truth as it is. Is very much required because without knowledge, Prabhupada even says, the society without Brahmanas, Brahmanas is, are considered to be the head of the society. So if the head is not there, is just like a headless society. You know, imagine a body without a head running. Where he, where he will go? He can run very fast, but it's useless because there's no direction. So Shila Prabhupada is the head. And devotees who are following his instructions are also the heads of the society. Why a Brahman is considered the head of society? Well, because everything we do is based on some axiomatic truth that I said before. So that must be ascertained by, by, by the Brahmanas. By people who are free from corruption. They can present the truth without motivation. Otherwise, as soon as there's a little motive, then we start to bend the truth to please the uh, the benefactors. Mm -hmm. And there are some, you know, people who have interest. You know, there are um, people who have uh, agendas to keep people in ignorance, to manipulate them. And knowledge is dangerous. Just like this uh, coronavirus, you know, if people understand what is going on and they will not submit to these lockdowns, right? So that this is one of the theories that actually the whole virus is, is made up. That they have not... I, I have done a little research, so some of the people, they say, I don't know, you can tell me in the comment section, I'm not very, as I said, I'm not very conversant with this. I'm not going to pretend that I know what is going on. <clears throat> but um, some of the researchers they say that um, the coronavirus was not isolated so in order to prove some virus you need to isolate it first if you don't isolate the virus then you can't really say that oh it's the virus who caused you know like anything in the science this is now we're coming to science they want to see God right with their eyes where's God show me I want to see the proof if you say well God is everywhere you know, and by his energy, they will not accept. I need to see God specifically, the personality. Where is he? Show me. Mm. So, 
they will not believe. But um, now when we ask them, can you isolate the virus, they also cannot show. So why should we believe? I don't know. Do they? Did they? Did they isolate the virus? Did they not? I don't know. You you can tell me in the comment section. But uh, this is a, one of the things that I researched. I'm actually open. I'm open to uh, the different to rebuttal of this. You know, I this is one thing that the Vedic knowledge encourages very much. <clears throat> not take one-sided opinion. And the Shri Upanishad is mentioned. And one should study the knowledge along with the nescience. If you just study knowledge and you don't know the nescience, your that knowledge is also incomplete. So if we study, we must study both points of view in order to make a sound conclusion. Not just take what suits our purpose. You know, but you have to study both at the same time. This is how you can make a, a relatively sound conclusion on any subject matter. So um, I would like to see uh, some arguments uh, or research or evidence. If I mean, This is one of the claims that they have not isolated the virus. That's why it is, it's suspicious whether the actual virus uh, really exists. And the idea that some people are uh, 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 propagating is that the virus doesn't exist and all these numbers are just uh, well yeah this is another thing that uh, the tests everything is based on these tests right the, you see the numbers people are seeing that the numbers are increasing the numbers are increasing because people are getting tested and these tests are not accurate they're not accurate. I don't exactly know what is going on with this test. What is the purpose of this test? How it works, I don't know. But um, this has been admitted that sometimes people get tested positive, but they don't have anything. They don't have any virus. And sometimes people get the symptoms of the virus, the cough and so on and so on, and they're tested negative. The test doesn't show. So we're basing this whole pandemic and the whole hysteria on tests that are not accurate they're imperfect and if they're imperfect it's questionable whether they actually they're they're uh, they indicate anything you know so this is another point that i have uh, a doubt about i and um what do you think by <clears throat> well yeah the whole basis is that the like you mentioned before, you were mentioning when I came in, the scientists are imperfect. So, also, anything that they manufacture, any instrument they use, is also imperfect. So, a test de facto, if it's made by a conditioned soul, also will have imperfections. I mean, aside from the fact that it might be, you know, really, really off, and they haven't isolated the virus, so how can you make a test because you don't even know actually what you're testing for? Um. Still, it's an unreliable way to know if people have the virus or not. Of course, I mean, you kind of get into some, uh, the theoretical realm that, well, you can never test anything, really. But in one sense, I mean, yeah, it's very true. It's very difficult. Like Prabhupada mentions in the Isha Panisha when he's talking about the different ways of ascertaining knowledge that you can ask um, to find out whether man is mortal. You can ask inquire you from um you know from people and you may come to the conclusion that man is mortal but there may be one man who is uh immortal and you haven't found him yet so the research method is uh, always an imperfect way of ascertaining knowledge and um yeah still still they use this method so of course it's kind of a little difficult there's not really a lot of other ways to know if people have the COVID, but I think this is uh, this is generally a flaw that people put, like you say, too much faith in this system. And the whole world now is going to ruins um, because of absolute faith in something which is um, by by ma by nature flimsy and unreliable. And um, you know the whole 
Uh, the whole world is on lockdown. People are losing their jobs. People are on the street. People are going hungry. People are in arms. We've seen so many riots here in London. It's really quite feisty atmosphere on the streets. Um, people are like, you know, I also saw in Prague there were videos. Uh, people are really like, you know, fighting there, and there's big riots and and um, um, distrust in the government, uh, all because of some test and the guy who made the test even he said that the it actually cannot ascertain i don't know if you just mentioned this point but it cannot ascertain the uh whether the disease actually is um uh someone has the disease or not so uh yeah i mean in my opinion about the whole thing anyway it's kind of like a different point but you uh whether there's this disease or another disease, I mean, you test, you're testing for this one disease, but there are so many other diseases that the person also is going to have. So in one sense, what is the use of all this lockdown, all this distress, all this anxiety, and um, money, time, effort, everything, practically wasted because you're trying to stop, you're trying to, what's the, there's an expression that you try to put, uh, what is the use of patchwork? You know, the ship is leaking. Mm. It's got big holes in the ship. The water's flowing in, and you're trying to put little, little band aids on the on the holes. So you're trying to solve a little problem. You've got to solve more problem. You got to you got to try and save the uh, the whole ship. I don't think that's a, not exactly a perfect analogy, but I think people understand what I'm trying to get at. That you're 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 trying to solve a very little um, aspect of the problem, and there's a much bigger problem. Namely, that we have the material body in the first place, which is prone to disease by nature. So even if you test, okay, this person has a disease, he gets a cure, he's going to get another disease because that is the nature of the body that we all have. So anyway, that is my radical opinion. Srila Prabhupada also condemns this uh, um, way of solving problems in the material world he says that uh, he's talking about buddhism that uh the buddhists they say that um since there's distress in the material world make it zero mm-hmm. make it nirvana finish everything you know we're nothing you become nothing nirvana that's it that's the perfection of human life and Prabhupada compares it to a, a patient who comes with a son who has a fever and um, the doctor gives him a, an injection and the uh, child dies. So the doctor is asking, uh, s- sorry, the, the father is objecting, my son, he died. The, do- the doctor asks, but does he have temperature? No, he doesn't have temperature, he's dead. Okay, so the problem solved. The temperature <laughs> the problem is solved, but he's dead. So, yes, you solve the virus problem, but the economy is crushed. What kind of solution is this? You see, they say, well, we have solved the problem. You have solved one problem, you create another problem. What is your credit? What are you doing, actually? See, um, in my opinion, what actually should be done is, even if there's a virus, let the people die in peace. I've said it so many times. Let the people die in peace because you can't save you can't save them anyway. This is this is the whole idea, all the whole brainwashed idea that we're saving people from death. People will die, people will get disease, and you know this how it has been for millions of years. But what if someone says that well the science that's the science is posing as some kind of this is the blind faith uh, that people have they they posing as some kind of a godlike entity that will make life eternal you know they will they will make light out of matter they make a, a person immortal they will stop all the disease now, all these things they have never done anything of, and they seem to be promising in the future the post data jack philosophy, and that's why people have faith in the scientists because they give all these promises that they never fulfill and they can't fulfill because they don't even understand the fundamental 
difference between matter and spirit. The spirit, the consciousness is eternal, is never created by matter or anything, and the matter is always temporary. So th there's no question how you can have eternal life by using material elements. These simple things are explained in the Bhagavad Gita. And even the simple things they, they don't understand. They're confusing people so much on these fundamental principles. It's not a big science. If you just, you know, study the Bhagavad Gita, this, this is the first thing what Krishna says. You are not this body. That which is eternal, uh, there's no cessation. That which is temporary always dies. So um, <clears throat> this is the problem, you know. If, if they were just not interfering with things and let people die, there will never be a point where everyone gets disease. You know, this is nonsense. This is extinction, like you said, it's scientists, the, the, the life on earth will be extinct and everything, you know. This is your great pride. You think that, oh, I can, you know, I can create such a, such a uh, disaster in the world that, you know, the life will be over. You're not so big. Everything is controlled by Krishna. So, it really matters how we see the world, whether we're God conscious or not. And now we can see that if we're not God conscious, there's tremendous uh, consequences. You know, people who say, I have no time for this. I have no time to attend your classes. I have no time to read your books or buy your books. Now you, you are feeling the consequences, and it will be worse and worse and worse if people don't wake up. I wholeheartedly agree. But the reason that they don't do it is because even though the solution is so simple i mean it's the it's actually like very simple i mean we tell people we say it all the time on the podcast and we are obviously doing that a lot in books distribution and it's the the main it's the fundamental preaching point krishna says hey you're not the body that's i mean when people understand that you're not the body or the consciousness pretty much uh, every problem <laughs> in the material world is finished but the reason people don't accept this simple knowledge um, is because people want to enjoy and those and like you said the scientists are being paid off or sorry they uh, yeah but being paid off and uh, why why it's not honest because they want something actually they just want sense gratification it's not honest work if it was honest work the Bhagavad Gita is widely known uh, people would pick up on this knowledge and it would be uh, common knowledge that we are not the body but because people want something material they want enjoyment if they understand I'm not the body then they have to stop naturally they have to stop bodily enjoyment they have to inquire about higher principles so um, uh, because people are motivated um, they don't take to this simple knowledge and the whole world goes to hell so uh, people should have the um, people should try and get a sense that uh, this uh, the uh, for the sake of some very uh, ethereal, um, if, sorry, ephemeral um, sense enjoyment. Uh, actually, yourself and everyone around you suffers tremendously. So, I would like to finish the point I was making before. Um, someone, of course, will say, "Oh, this this is the." The arguments that everyone's going to give that, oh, you're so cruel, you will let the people die. You have no human consideration. Um, so I will explain what I mean. And this is what Srila Prabhupada says. The clear evidence that we're not curing disease is that sometimes people have disease and um, they don't die. They have a deadly disease, cancer, AIDS, whatever, but they don't die. And sometimes people are completely healthy, everything is fine, and they die. With the best cure, uh, with the best medicine, they die. With the doctors, perfectly, you know, everything perfect, perfectly arranged, they still die. And sometimes poor people without any, you know, they live for 100 years. With disease in their body. See... This proves that there are other causes involved in the process, many other causes, lots of conditioning. And these are the results of one's karma. These are karmic reactions. 
it's not so easy it's not so clear cut that i just take a pill and then i solve my problem you know the very simplistic ideas the law of karma is very complex and the law of karma is sure if you're meant to die at a particular moment by your karma you will die doesn't matter how it's going to happen you must die this is how our destiny is controlled by the karma not by our so-called methods you know that can help to a certain extent but you know there's there's a higher principle just like for example if i take a stick and i beat you <laughs> you might say that the, the stick is beating me right because you know you just see uh, the immediate cause but you don't see the person with the stick and that person also is triggered by someone else and someone else and so like a domino imagine a domino effect going in reverse so the autumn why is it important to inquire about god because god is the supreme cause and if you don't understand the supreme cause you're just dealing with these immediate causes and you have no idea what is going on you just see externally this is this is you know they're very good at this they're creating panic in people because people are simply superficial and that is due to over like you said overly involved in ephemeral sent gratifying pleasures people don't inquire so i have my eating i have my sleeping i have my sexing that's all that's all i need that's why they don't inquire about and that's why they like sheep like animals it is required that at least a class of men they inquire and they realize what is going on and they enlighten the others about this this is our duty in human form of life this is our duty as devotees also inquire uh research and um distribute the knowledge this is what all of us can do hari krishna hari krishna so um thank you so much uh, for listening and of course we'll be uh, publishing more podcasts as the events um develop um you can uh, give a donation as i said before all the links are in the description my treya please don't forget to post and um take care of yourself hari krishna jai uglesh shila prabhupad jai dun 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 i kind of with the tune anyway hari krishna <laughs>